the Word. Today we're going to kick off a brand new teaching series. We have entitled this series, After the Rose. Somebody say that. Say, After, after. the Rose. Say it again. Say, After, after. the Rose. Now, our series theme, the big idea for this series is we're going to be teaching over the next four weeks about dating according to biblical principles. Dating according to biblical principles. Now, I know what some of you all may be thinking. You may be thinking, okay, Pastor MK, I got a problem with your thesis right off the top. How in the world are you going to teach about dating from the Bible when the word dating never shows up in the Bible? How are you going to teach about dating from a biblical perspective when the people in biblical times weren't dating like we date right now? In fact, their families, their fathers were, were heavily involved in their dating, in their relationships, their romantic relationships. What I would say to you is something that my mentor, Dr. Darius Daniels, pastor and author, says. Here's what he says. He says, the Bible does not speak to everything in practice, but it does speak to everything in principle. I'm going to say that again. The Bible does not speak to everything in practice, but the Bible, God's Word, does speak to everything in principle, if you are trying to decipher whether or not you should invest in the stock market, and you go to God's Word trying to find guidance for that decision, you're not going to find the word stock market in the Bible. Because that practice wasn't being practiced back then. However, God's Word is full of biblical principles that speak to making wise investment. I believe that God's Word, the Bible, is the greatest source of relational wisdom. So we're going to take over these next four weeks principles from God's Word, and my goal in this series is I want to help Christian singles, we want to help Christian singles engage in healthy and fulfilling dating relationships based on biblical principles. We want to help Christian singles to engage in healthy and fulfilling dating relationships according to biblical principles. Now, again, you may be a Christian single. You may not be ready today. Okay, is this next four weeks going to be a waste of my time? You may be married. You're not single. You may be thinking, okay, are the next four weeks going to be a waste of my time? For you, I want to remind you that there's no such thing as an irrelevant word from God. I'm going to say that again. There's no such thing as an irrelevant word from God. Sometimes God gives us his word, and it's for us in the moment. Other times God gives us his word. It may not be applicable in the moment, but he's preparing us for what's coming. God's word is bread. Sometimes God gives us light. He gives us truth, not because it's necessarily for us. He wants us to share it with others. So I want you to listen to this series out of two sets of ears. I want you to listen and evaluate and ask yourself, okay, what is God, what is the Holy Spirit saying to me, and what might the Holy Spirit be wanting me to share with others? Now, we've taken this series, After the Rose, from a popular television reality show called The Bachelor, The Bachelorette. By a show of hands, those of you in the room, how many of you all have ever seen the show, heard of the show? Can I see your hands? That's most of the room. If you're not familiar with The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, it's a reality show where a single man or single woman dates a large pool of contestants. And every single week, the single man or the single woman eliminates this large pool of contestants by exchanging or passing out roses week by week. They hand out roses to people they want to continue getting to know. Now, the approach of some people on the show, not everybody, some people on the show is this, I will do whatever it takes if it means that I get with the right person. If I can find the right person, if I can get with him, if I can get with her, I'm willing to say whatever it takes, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. As long as at the end of the day, as long as at the end of the show, I walk away connected to the right person, 
person. If I need to casually tell you I love you to get the rose this week. And maybe next week, I'm trying to explore a different connection with someone else. I need to tell them that I love them because I need to see where this connection can go. Then I'm willing to do it. I may even be willing to give my body to the right person, if it's the right person, because I'm looking for love. Now, I know what some of you singles are thinking. Some of you singles are probably thinking, especially my single ladies, you're probably thinking, I would never. I would never. Okay, I've seen the show, I've heard of the show, but I would never. See, the way my mama raised me, the way my daddy raised me, I don't even want my family in my business, let alone the entire nation. And and you're right, you're right. You wouldn't go on a show like that. But the problem is this. When I look at modern dating, when I look at culture, even outside of reality TV, when I just look at the reality that we're living in in 2024, I see some of the same results in dating relationships that I see on the show. What do you mean, MK? I mean that at the end of the show, at the end of the season, The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, Golden Bachelor, all the spinoffs, what you normally find after all of the roses have been passed out is you often find people full of unmet expectations, people who are disillusioned, people who've misplaced trust. You see a lot of broken friendships, broken hearts. And I not only see that on the show, many singles who are dating in today's scene, dating scene, run into unmet expectations. Not all, but many have had their hearts broken. Many feel disillusioned. Okay, I misplaced my trust. I thought that I could trust her, but I saw that I couldn't. I thought that I could trust him. I thought that he loved me. And the unfortunate reality is this. Not only are a lot of those same results in today's modern dating scene, they're also in the dating scene in the body of Christ. Jesus said, my vision for my disciples is that they would be like a city that's set up on a hill. In other words, I want people to look at the lives of my disciples. I want people to look at the relationships in the lives of my disciples and see something to look up to, see something to aspire to, see another level that they can achieve. As a believer, here's what I want you to know. God has a higher level for you. In the whole of your life, God has a higher level for you. In your dating relationships, God has a higher level for you. If we choose to approach our relationships God's way, we'll get what God promised. God said that my blessings will enrich your lives. My blessings will advance your lives. My blessings will push you forward, and it won't have any sorrow with it. That's the higher level. I believe that God is sending this word because he's wanting to bring healthy, fulfilling relationships into your lives. Healthy relationships, fulfilling relationships that's not full of mistrust, that's not full of broken hearts. God has a higher level. Say that. Say, God God has a higher higher level for me. me. Let's say it again by faith. Say, God God has a higher higher level level for me. But here's a big life principle that I want you to lock in on, regardless of your relationship status. Listen at this. Whenever God wants to take you to a higher level, he's going to take you there head first. I'm going to say that again. Whenever God wants to take you to a higher level, 
take you to a higher place, he's going to start with your thinking. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, God said, do not copy the behavior and the customs of the world. Your standard is not what everybody else in culture is doing. It says, let God transform you into a new person. How? By changing the way that you think. I don't care what area of your life in, when God wants to elevate you, when God wants to raise you, he's going to start with your mindset. And we're not going to be able to look at reality TV to determine how God wants us to think about relationships. We're not even going to be able to look at our family history, even if it was healthy. Our standard for relationships, our standard from life comes from God. There are going to be times where in this mind renewal, God changing the way that we think, where God is going to get new information to you. A lot of times, though, when God is trying to change the way you think, it's not necessarily going to be him getting new information to you. It's going to be him getting you to release old information. A lot of us have heard a lot of sermons. The problem is not we need more information. The problem for some of us is we need to release some old information. So in this first lesson, I want to teach, this is my renewal, I want to teach from this title, The Seasons of Dating. Somebody say that. Say the seasons Seasons. of dating. Dating. Let's say it again. Say the seasons Seasons. of dating. dating. Let's dive into this. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. It's one of our foundational scriptures. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. King Solomon writes, enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. Keep that up there. Enthusiasm. Pastor, I am ready. I've been on ready. Great, 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 great. Again, I believe that God is sending his word. He would not have us teaching this randomly. I believe that God wants to send people into your life, and it's going to be mutually fulfilling. But Solomon says that if we're enthusiastic, if we're ready, but we lack knowledge, he said that's not a good thing. If we jump into things uninformed, Solomon says we're going to make some unnecessary mistakes. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Solomon again writes, for everything, somebody say everything, Everything. that would include dating, for everything there is a season, there is a time for every activity under heaven. Same chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, I'm going to read it in the New King James Version. Solomon writes, he has made everything beautiful in its time. I believe that dating is a beautiful thing. I don't believe that if we want to avoid broken hearts that we have to throw dating away. God said everything is beautiful in its time. Talking about the seasons of dating. Now, I want to start at a ground level. I want to start off by defining our terms so that you and I are on the same page. Let's first, before we get into this season thing, let's just define the word date. What is a date? I want to use this definition. A date is an opportunity for two people to get to know one another in a social setting. A date is an opportunity for two people. It could be a group date, but it's an opportunity for two people to get to know one another in a social setting. It's an opportunity. Somebody say opportunity. Opportunity. A date is not a commitment to marriage. You don't have to know that he's the one. You don't have to know that she's the one to take them out on a date. If we understand that singles, that's going to take a lot of pressure off of us. 
if I got to know that she's the one just to take her out to coffee. (laughs) That's some pressure. And let me give you a secret. Let me give you a secret. It's a lot of married people in the room who when they look back over their dating relationships, they are grateful that God gave them additional opportunities to keep picking. They learn some things along the way as they kept picking. Dating is not a commitment to marriage. Dating relationships, talking about seasons, dating relationships develop over time. And I want you to understand that they progress through seasons. They're going to develop, they're going to evolve, they're going to change. Your dating relationships are going to change over time. And they're going to evolve and progress through seasons. So I want to slow down. I want to answer a few questions. I want to answer this question. Why is it important for us to understand the seasons of a dating relationship? Okay, if God has said everything is beautiful in its time, that if I'm enthusiastic about something and I jump into it, but I don't have knowledge, Solomon says that I'll make some mistakes. Why is it important for you? Why is it important for me to understand the seasons of a dating relationship? I want to give you five reasons. We're going to put these reasons up on the screen. Here's the first one. The rush, and I'll move through this kind of fast, but you can go back to our mobile app or YouTube and slow me down. The rush of excitement you feel when you meet someone new and there's a mutual attraction is a beautiful and powerful thing, but it can be deceptive. The rush of excitement. You meet him. You meet her. You are attracted and they are too. You see that there's some chemistry. There is a rush when you know that you're feeling them and they're feeling you. And I am saying that that excitement, that rush, it's a beautiful thing, but it can be deceptive. Why is it important to understand the seasons of a dating relationship? Number two, understanding the seasons of a dating relationship will help us to prevent unrealistic expectations. Sometimes we're getting our hearts broken because we're expecting the wrong thing at the wrong time. We're drifting into the wrong thing at the wrong time. Next week, we're going to talk about boundaries. Sometimes we're skipping steps, we're skipping seasons. And when we find out, hey, we weren't on the same page. I thought we were in love. They thought we were just kicking it. But we've invested. Sometimes on too deep a level, too soon. When we understand the seasons of a dating relationship, it'll help us to prevent unrealistic expectations. We'll dive into that in a second. Number three, why is it important to understand the seasons of a dating relationship? When we work through the seasons of a dating relationship, it can help to protect us from a false sense of love, a false sense of exclusivity, a false sense of intimacy, and a false sense of commitment. Your relationship is going to develop over time. Keep that up. It's going to develop over time, evolve and progress over time. And when we work through the seasons, it helps to protect us from a false sense of love. I thought it was love, but it wasn't really love. It helps to protect us from a false sense of exclusivity. I thought You were my girl. You thought we were just hanging out. I gave my body to you. I thought we were in a committed relationship. 
I thought because we had been intimate physically that this was headed somewhere. When I understand and work through the seasons of a relationship, it'll help me to keep from placing the wrong label on the relationship. Sometimes we're getting hurt because we're placing the wrong labels. We're skipping steps. We're going off into territory that we should not go in. Why is it important to understand the seasons of relationship? Number four, when two individuals keep their interactions, their dating interactions consistent with the season, they can often part ways without seriously wounding each other. When I understand the season that we're in, it may not go to the next season, and that's okay. That's okay. We may not go any further. You may not go any further than the season that you're in. I am saying that that is okay. I am saying that it is healthy. You can still walk away from that relationship, but if we do the right things in the right season, we can walk away without tearing each other up. We can walk away and people can bring up their name in conversation. Don't even bring him up around me. Don't even say his name. We can't say his name around you because you skip some steps. We can't bring them up. You don't even want to see them. You don't even want to pass by them in the hallway at church. You see them, you go on the other side of the hallway. Some dating relationships are going to culminate in friendship. That's going to be a beautiful thing. But we can end this without tearing each other up emotionally. Why is it important to understand the seasons of a dating relationship. Number five, when you allow the dating relationship to progress through seasons, it gives you and it gives them time to experience the relationship and to experience the person in multiple environments. Okay, I got to slow down on this one. Okay, when we understand the seasons of a dating relationship, It gives us time. Somebody say time. Time. Somebody say time. Time. I know that you love her. But you need to give it some time. I know that you know in your heart of hearts that he is the one. You may be right. right. Evaluate it over time. You need time to evaluate that relationship in different environments. Y'all can be great in private. How are you all when you're with a group of friends? How does he act, how does she act when you bring them around your friends? It's great when y'all are private, when y'all spend time with each other's families, you need time to evaluate the relationship. You need time to evaluate the person over time. Time has a way of allowing you to see who somebody really is, especially in church. We confront with the best of them. We know the right thing to say. We know the right thing to do. But it's hard to put up a front long term. And you need time to evaluate this person in multiple settings. So let's get into it. I gave you five reasons why understanding the seasons of dating is important, but what are, the se- what are the dating seasons? I have five. Now, you read a book, they may have six. You listen to another preacher, they may have seven. This is my lesson. And I got five. 
I'm going to give you the five that I have, and then I want to walk you through each one. We don't have to throw dating away. We just have to understand what is appropriate in this season. Five seasons of dating. Number one, the first season that I have is what I'm calling the first date. The second season that I have is what I'm calling dating non-exclusively. The third season is dating exclusively. The fourth season that I have is engagement. And the fifth season is dating and marriage. The first date, dating non-exclusively, dating exclusively, engagement, and then dating in marriage. Let's go to the first one. I want to talk about the first date. Somebody say first date. date. Somebody say the first date. date. Yes, the first one. (laughs) The first date. What is the goal of this season? Every season has a goal. What is the goal of this first season? The goal is to enjoy yourself and to have fun. You mean Christians can have fun? Absolutely. The goal of the first date is to enjoy yourself, have a blast. Hang out. What is the attachment or exclusivity of this season? None. What is the obligation that you have to the other person in this series, in this season? None. You have no obligation to them, and they have no obligation to you. You are free to go out on other dates with others. They are free to go out on dates with others. You are under no obligation to go out on a second date. If you go out on a second date, that should be your choice. What is the level of physical intimacy in this season? None. What is the level of sexual intimacy in this season? (laughs) Biblical principles, not culture. Biblical. According to biblical principles, the level of sexual intimacy in this season is none. Now, I am talking to believers. If you're not a believer, I'm going to give you an opportunity at the end of this lesson to become one. I believe it's the greatest relationship. The relationship that you have with God is the greatest relationship that you will have in your life. But I want to talk to my men first. And I want to talk to my single ladies. I want to talk to my men, kingdom men. That is who you are. You are a kingdom man. You're not defined by how culture defines you. You're not defined by how the world defines you. You're not defined by any label that they would try to place on you. You are a kingdom man. As a kingdom man, your allegiance is to Jesus. He is your Lord. He sets the standards and the boundaries of what is acceptable behavior for you as a kingdom man. It does not matter what the other guys are doing. You are a kingdom man. It doesn't matter what you've even done in your past. God can redeem your past. But as a kingdom man, you have to wrestle down the lordship issue. Is Jesus just my savior? Was he just my get out of jail, get out of hell card? You as a kingdom man have to wrestle down, am I going to take this Christianity thing serious? If you take it serious, there are boundaries around your sexuality. 
and there is grace. It's not willpower. There is supernatural power from God to help you. Just because you could have it doesn't mean that you need to take it. There has to be an internal boundary in you that's not dependent on her. It's not dependent on culture. It's not dependent on the environment. There's an internal boundary on the inside. I am a kingdom man. I won't go past it. Because it's possible for you to make decisions outside of what God has said acceptable, and us will never know. You're grown. You know how to handle your business. I know how to keep what's behind closed doors behind closed doors. You do. You do. But as a kingdom man, there's also a principle, talking principles of sowing and reaping in the kingdom. And I am saying as a kingdom man, you can sow seeds through your behavior that will never show up in your life. They'll never show up in your relationships. They'll never show up in your intimate encounters with others, but it'll show up in your kids. It'll show up in your daughters. You say, well, where is that Bible? Abraham, Abraham in Genesis is with Sarah, his wife. Sarah is fine. Abraham goes (laughs) to a foreign country. He's scared that the men of the country are going to attack him, kill him, and take his wife. So in a pressure situation, Abraham, who is Sarah to you? Oh, she's my sister. This is my sister. No, bro, that's your wife. He lies. He hits a moment of pressure, and he lies, and his kids are nowhere in the picture. Isaac is nowhere on the scene when he lies. As you read the rest of Genesis, Isaac is married. Abraham's son is married. Isaac finds himself in a pressure situation. I am afraid that the men of this country are going to kill me. Isaac was not with his father when his father lied. Isaac hits a pressure situation. Isaac, who is she to you? Isaac says the same thing that his daddy said. She's my sister. Abraham did not teach him through his example to lie. Isaac wasn't there to watch his example. Abraham sowed seeds in the present that showed up in his bloodline in the future. Ladies, you're grown. You know how to handle your business behind closed doors, too. And y'all are in love. This is your man. Y'all are exclusive. Here's what you got to wrestle down. You got to wrestle down the lordship issue, too. But if you have any thought that this relationship can go to distance, If there's any part of you that says, hey, I want to be with this man long term, or I think that it's possible, here's what you got to realize. You want a man long term who can demonstrate self-control, who can demonstrate temperance with his physical body. Putting a ring on his finger will not give him self-control. It will not give him temperance if he cannot exercise it in the single season. If he cannot keep his zipper up in the single season, jumping a broom is not going to change that. What are key factors that I need to consider in this first season, this first date season? Key factors to consider are attraction and chemistry. Attraction and chemistry. When I'm trying to decide, do I want to go back out with them? Evaluate the first date. 
Are you attracted in any way, intellectually, emotionally, physically? Are you attracted? And did you have chemistry? Because somebody can be fine but boring on the date. And what's boring to you may be great for me. So this is gonna be relative. You gotta make, you gotta evaluate, is there any chemistry, is there any attraction when deciding whether to go on a second date? And what I wanna encourage you to do is when you're evaluating, is there any chemistry or is there an attraction, be honest with you and them. You know you're not attracted to them physically. Don't, don't just go out to restaurant after restaurant after restaurant eating on them, <laughs> eating off of them. You know them little foodie dates? I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm going to just get a free meal. You know that when you took her out, it wasn't any chemistry. And you can sense when somebody is feeling you. Yeah. Be honest with yourself, be honest with them when making the decision of whether or not you wanna go to the next season. Season number two is dating non-exclusively. I've entered into this season when I've gone out on a second date. What is the goal of this second season, dating non-exclusively? The goal of this second season is developing a friendship. Again, dating is not a commitment to marriage. So in this second season, there's still no exclusivity. You are free to date others. They are free to date others. There's no obligation in this series. Understanding the season is going to help you to know what level of investment to make in the season. They're not obligated to keep going out with you. They're not obligated to go further than this season with you. They're not obligated in this season to date you exclusively. There's no obligation. In this season, you may be attracted to the person, but you may not know where that attraction is headed. Is this just a friendship? Is it something more? It's okay to not know yet fully where that attraction is going to lead. In this second season, there's still no physical intimacy, still no sexual intimacy. Oftentimes, this season is going to be centered around activities going out dancing, going to the movies, going to a concert, hanging out, hanging out, I almost said hanging out at the club. <laughs> I, I meant to say hanging out at a sporting event. Get it together, Pastor, get it together. Get it together, pull it in, Pastor. It's gonna be centered around activities. Now you gotta make a decision, and it has to be mutual, Will the relationship end in this season? If it goes to the next season, which is dating exclusively, that has to be a mutual decision. That determination can't be uneven. That has to be something that you both decide. Dating exclusively is the third season that I want to talk about. The goal of this dating season is to learn more about the relationship, learn more about the person. You're spending more time with them. I talked about it. it's important to see and evaluate this relationship in different settings. To evaluate this person over time. What did you mean, MK, by evaluating and learning about this person? You need to observe and learn over time how they relate to you and others. You need to be observing in this season their emotional maturity. If you've never seen them mad, you're not ready to get married. Come on now. How do they respond when they're angry? How do they respond when they're hungry? Yes. Are they moody? <laughs> do they have moral character? What are their personal habits? You need to be observing them in the relationship. In this season, there is exclusivity, but I want to say this. There is exclusivity. You're not in this season dating other people, but exclusive doesn't mean cutting you off from key relationships. If in this season they say, hey, you need to be spending time with me. You don't need nobody else. You don't need to be spending time with your family. You don't need no other friends. I am your friend. That is not exclusive. That's control. Red flag. 
Run. <laughs> Run. In this season, you're learning more about the person. You want to share more intimate things, your dreams, your goals, your desires. There is physical intimacy in this season. It's fine to hold hands. It's fine to hug. It's fine to kiss. There's still no sexual intimacy in this season. An important factor in this third season is you are evaluating over time, do I see the relationship progressing further than us just dating? I'm going to say that a little different. Can I see them as my life partner? Not everybody that you enter into this season with will become a life partner if you choose to get married. We're going to talk in this season about how do you pick a life partner. Because you can pick wrong. And God don't want you picking wrong. Can I see them as my life partner? The fourth stage of a dating relationship, the fourth season, is engagement. The goal of the engagement season is to prepare for marriage. Somebody say prepare. prepare. Somebody say prepare. prepare. You need to prepare for marriage. This season is exclusive. I have one obligation in this season. Premarital counsel is a must. Yeah. Don't skip it. And don't say, hey, we are going to go to Panera Bread, we're going to go to Cheesecake Factory, and we're going to counsel ourselves. <laughs> nah. Nah. Still go to the Cheesecake Factory. Yeah. Although, you know, they say on these lists that Cheesecake Factory ain't one of the places that the latest fill in now. <laughs> so y'all decide where y'all want to go. But your counseling needs to be done by a professional third party. If you don't know where to go, Faith Chapel offers free premarital counseling, but premarital counseling needs to be done by an outside third party. In premarital counseling, you're going to dive into a lot of deep topics that you may not have explored in the previous season. In premarital counseling, you need to go further into your goals, individually and corporately. You need to talk about expectations. What do I expect from my husband? What do I expect from my wife? What do I expect sexually? You're not having sex in this season, but in this engagement season, you need to talk about it. Talk about your needs. You need to talk about your past. You need to talk about your past relationships histories. If there's any incarceration, you want to dig into finances. You want to dig into in-laws. If you have kids, you want to explore how are we going to raise our kids. If there's outside kids, we got to find out in this season. No surprises when we say I do. No surprise babies. There's physical intimacy in this season, no sexual intimacy. The important factor in this engagement season is we want to get all of the secrets out. Yeah. Listen to me. Don't marry a person that you don't know. That's good. Listen to them. You're in the, pre -count, you're in the premarital counseling meeting. Counselor brings up part of their life. I don't want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about it. We're not ready to move into the next season. Yeah. Don't marry someone that you don't know. You all have to make a decision in this season. Do we want to move forward into marriage? The fifth and final season that I have in a dating relationship is dating in marriage. Here's what I want to say about dating in marriage continue prioritizing time for each other even after you say I do. Amen. What's the win in dating and marriage? Keep dating. Oftentimes it's possible for couples to invest intentionally in their relationship in the dating seasons and to put it on autopilot in marriage. The relational needs didn't change just because you said I do. You want to continue to invest in the marriage, in the relationship, even after marriage. Now, we can't cover 
all scenarios and all situations. So I want to give you two recommendations. Whenever we're preparing lessons, we'll read books, we'll look at outside resources. I want to recommend two books to you. If you want to explore this topic or dating in general deeper, the first book that I want to recommend to you is a book entitled True Love Dates by Deborah Folletta. True Love Dates by Deborah Folletta. She's a licensed biblical counselor, great book. The second book that I want to recommend to you is How to Get a Date Worth Keeping. I like that title. That's by Dr. Henry Cloud. It's a great book. How to Get a Date. We don't just want any date. We want one that's worth keeping. I believe that both of those resources will be a blessing to you. I said on next week, we're going to explore this idea of dating deeper. We're going to talk about boundaries. One of the reasons that we skip steps or drift is because we don't have a vision for what those boundaries need to be, and we're going to talk through them. I want to close, though, by saying this. Anytime that God shows us his word, it's like a mirror. God uses his word to show us us. As humans, we may sound perfect on this stage. My wife, Michelle, will be the first to tell you <laughs> I'm not perfect. The beautiful thing about it is that as believers, God doesn't require us to be perfect. He asks us to be committed, and he wants us to make progress over time. As you look at your dating history, you may say, hey, man, I tore up all of them seasons. I just, I burst right through them. Acting married in the very first season. Here's what I want to tell you. Here's what I want to tell you. There's no condemnation in God. God does not send his word to condemn us. When you see an area of your life that's beneath God's standard, you want to be aware of it, you want to take responsibility for it, and you want to make an adjustment. Amen. Here's what God says in his word. God says, I will help you to both obey me and to want to. I'll give you a supernatural power. You don't have to follow my instructions just on effort, willpower. He says, I'll help you with the want to. And I'll help you to obey me. I want to pray over you before I give an invitation. Father God, I pray over these, your people. Father God, I thank you that there's no condemnation in you. I thank you, Father God, that the penalty of our mistakes, the penalty of our sin has already been paid through the shed blood of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that as you expose us to your truth, I ask you to give us grace. Show us us. Show us where you're calling us to a higher level. God, show us where we need to adopt your way of thinking. Show us mindsets that we need to release. God, I thank you that we walk in the fullness of your blessing in our relationships. I thank you, Father God, that you enrich your people. I thank you, Father God, that you advance them. I thank you, Father God, that you give them healthy relationships, fulfilling relationships that are sorrow-free. We thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in us and for the example that you will shine through us. In Jesus' name.